everyone, it's me. My name is Alana and I'm a Canadian, but I have been living here in the UK for the last eight years. Recently, you guys were telling me that I needed to check out the worst British scandals. So here we are. Now, I would say that I have a fairly decent grasp on British culture. I've lived and worked here, you know, for eight years, but scandals? I have no idea. So grab a seat, get cozy, put your feet up, and without further ado, let's go. All right, so how scandalous can this be? We are doing the Watch Mojo 10 Most Ridiculous Scandals. Um, apparently everything is gonna end in gate. I don't, I don't know why people keep doing that. <laughs> this is apparently beer gate. So here we go. Beer gate. As Durham police confirmed, they're looking into what exactly is going on in this video taken during the Hartlepool by-election campaign. In 2022, the UK's news cycle had been almost entirely focused on one issue, Partygate. I am furious on behalf of- Okay, I do remember Partygate. I was here um, during the, the COVID era. <laughs> um, I moved to the UK at the end of 2015, so I was here and I do remember um, essentially like um, members of parliament were like having parties and stuff when we were all in crazy lockdown, maybe well, I, you probably remember, it wasn't that long ago. I don't know what beer gate is, essentially. Is it part of party gate? Our viewers who look at uh, allegations and now fines at Downing Street and in Whitehall for uh, people who decided not to follow the rules. But while Partygate is a serious breach of lockdown regulations that has led to massive rebellion from non-cabinet Tory MPs, its sibling, Beergate, is a lot sillier. It turned out that shockingly, in April 2021, Labour leader Keir Starmer, along with roughly a dozen of his shadow cabinet, was filmed drinking beer and eating takeaway. Uh, well, as I've explained eating the number of times we were working in the office, we stopped for something to eat, no party, no breach of the rules. This did not come in the heart of the lockdowns like the Downing Street parties, but it quickly spiralled out of control. Now, Starmer and Angela Rayner are facing fines, and both are threatening to resign to prove their integrity. Or... <laughs> well, couple of thoughts. Number one, he is now our prime minister, so... I guess he didn't step down. I don't really... I guess... Okay, well, this is called ridiculous scandals. Partygate was really quite offensive. Um, people died during lockdowns and loved ones couldn't be with dying loved ones. Do you know what I mean? Like it was rough. You could not see people. You couldn't comfort each other. It was a really scary time. And to know that um, the MPs were having parties and disregarding the rules that they like imposed was really quite offensive. It like that is a scandal and it was really disgusting to be fair. Now, this beer gate, they were they had some takeaway and beer. It wasn't during lockdown. Like I don't I get it is ridiculous. To be fair, it is ridiculous. Anywho, over a pint. Number 9. Sats oh, that was gate. it. <laughs> Back in 2008, <laughs> Russell Brand was still getting hired by major broadcasters. For a time, he had a show on BBC Radio 2, and in this particular broadcast, he was joined by Jonathan Ross. Brandon Ross called up actor Andrew Sachs, best known for his role as the waiter Manuel in Faulty Towers, and left a slew of obscene voicemails about how Brand had gone to bed with Sachs' granddaughter. I said some things <laughs> I didn't have <laughs> order. Okay. <laughs> So this um, video, it was posted two years ago. Of course, this little like news section, I think I said from 2008, a lot has happened with Russell Brand since then. Uh, a lot of stuff have come out, really disgusting, gross stuff. So this, like he's doing something inappropriate with someone's grandchild, really not surprising. Do you know what I mean? I don't know if you've seen him lately. Um, I mean, I do my best not to. <laughs> But the photos that I've seen, he looks kind of like a cult leader. Like he's like some sort of like guru, like. <laughs> like I had sex oh, no, no, with no, your granddaughter. No, 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 no. Thanks to the Daily Mail, it became a massive controversy, leading to numerous resignations, a £150,000 fine, and another nail in the coffin of Brand's mainstream career. Oh! I am the news tonight. I am the news. I am the news tonight. 
Jonathan Ross's career wasn't nearly so damaged. Number 8. Train Gate. Train In 2016, Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn was at the centre of a media circus about whether there were any empty seats on a train he was riding on. That many passengers face every day on the trains, commuters and long distance travellers. Today, this train is completely ram packed. Labour I mean, at least the train's running, Corbyn right? Sitting on the floor, saying they weren't any empty seats. And later Half the time I get the train, it it's uh, cancelled. <laughs> saying the train strike. wasn't nearly so full as a second video showed. They say at 11.07, Jeremy Corbyn walked past empty, unreserved seats in Coach H. A minute later, he passed empty but reserved seats in Coach F. Corbyn then said that he couldn't find two empty, unreserved seats next to each other so that he could talk to his wife. It was all to gain support for Labour's policy of publicly owned railways at the time, but even years on public opinion remains divided. Reality is, there's not enough trade. That's really. very funny. Okay, I, I don't remember this one at all. I mean, you want your seats together, of course, right? So you can talk to your wife, sure. Would you rather just sit on the floor or would you rather sit in two empty seats away from each other and perhaps after a couple of stops or whatever, things would open up and you could move? But this is like it's kind of like a PR thing. Very, very funny. I mean, it's great publicity if there were no empty seats. Absolutely. Number seven, Fridgegate. It's no secret that Boris Johnson spent the entirety of his 2019 election campaign avoiding GMB and Piers Morgan at all costs. This reached ahead when, early one morning, GMB reporter Jonathan Swain tried to question Johnson while he was doing a photo op with some milkmen in Yorkshire. Rather than answer the questions of Swain, Boris set one of his minders on him, who swore whilst the broadcast was going out live. Morning, Prime Minister. Everybody come on. Uh, good morning, Britain, Prime Minister. Oh. <gasps> oh. <laughs> I kind of remember the milk thing. It's funny. Um, say what you will about Boris Johnson's politics, obviously. Everybody's going to have an opinion. Politics. You love to see it. But it kind of felt like every time he did something publicly, it would either go horribly, horribly wrong or just be very embarrassing. <laughs> I have a hard time watching the Boris Johnson stuff because like I get secondhand embarrassment because it's just like cringe. Something happens. I got goosebumps just thinking about it. My personal favorite is when he's on the zip line um, and he got stuck on a zip line. He's just hanging there. I just can't watch anything with him in it. Politics or not, it's just too embarrassing. <laughs> Boris continually refused to engage with Swain and ultimately ended up hiding in a fridge. Right, he's been taken inside <laughs> into the freezer. He's gone into the Excuse fridge. Me. Number six, lobby gate. He hid in a fridge. You couldn't write this kind of stuff. You guys ever watch The Thick of It? I used to love that show, like a... Political comedy, I guess is what you'd call it. Genuinely one of the funniest shows I've ever watched. And sometimes this stuff just makes me think of the thick of it. Like a literal thick of it episode. All right, we're not going to watch all of um, Watch Mojo's video because that's kind of rude. We're going to skip ahead. Number four. I already have a feeling I know what this is. And this is another very secondhand embarrassment situation. <laughs> All right, well, we're here anyway, so if we see CCTV footage of him groping that woman, I'm going to be really upset. The Sun published videos and photos of Health Secretary Matt Hancock getting up to no good with one of his advisors, Gina Colodangelo. Downing Street said the matter was closed. The front page of every single national newspaper suggests otherwise. The Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, caught kissing an aide, breaching his own social distancing rules. But this wasn't your usual MP caught cheating on his wife scandal, because it came while COVID restrictions were still in place. Hancock eventually did step down from the cabinet and disappeared from the public for a while, before returning with a very cringe, Partridge-esque comeback video. There remain questions, though, over security and how these oh, images those... of the health secretary in a private setting were acquired. Perhaps don't cheat on your wife in plain view of an office security camera and let the footage fall into the hands of the sun. Number three, Tractig. <laughs> okay, I appreciate that I didn't show the footage. I have seen it. It is so 
cringy. Maybe don't cheat on your wife, ideally, you know. Don't cheat on your wife in front of a security camera with someone that you are employed. Um, and maybe don't cheat on your wife in front of a security camera with somebody that you've employed during COVID restrictions that you help implement. <laughs> I know 2020 was actually a few years ago now. It's kind of hard to imagine, but also it feels like so long ago. I feel like that was just like a different life. Do you know what I mean? Remember you got in trouble for just going outside like and you were sitting in a park because you were only allowed to be outside if you were actively exercising. You weren't allowed to like lounge somewhere and so cops would like move you along. And then you had this stuff going on in the background that is just so infuriating. But anyway, how you guys doing? <laughs> Good, I hope. Okay, I absolutely want to do tractor gate. <laughs> Um, I did a video about crazy British politics. Um, I'll link that at the end of this. And he did make an appearance. And this story is just genuinely, definitely, 100% a ridiculous scandal. We, we have to listen. Tractor Gate. In 2022, news broke that a Tory backbencher had been caught watching very explicit material on his phone while in the House of Commons during a parliamentary debate. But you could have viewed this content privately in your own time but you chose to do it in the chamber of the house of commons yeah madness total madness it took a few days for the full story to come out but eventually the mp was named as neil parish bizarrely rather than own up to what he'd done parish said that he hadn't meant to watch anything x-rated at all he'd been trying to view a website about tractors funnily enough it was tractors <laughs> The thick of it. Am I right? Yeah, something like he wanted to view a site about tractors, accidentally wound up on a pornographic website, and then he says the real issue was that he then visited that site a second time. You literally cannot make this stuff up. So I did get into another website um, that had a sort of very similar name. Um, and I watched it for a bit, which I shouldn't have done. Well, who hasn't been Googling farm equipment and mistakenly watched adult videos? A handful of similar investigations into the misconduct of politicians in Commons was launched in response, and Parrish resigned. Is this embarrassing? Of course it's embarrassing, and it's embarrassing for my wife um, <laughs> and her family, and so that's my main concern. Oh. Number two, Wink again. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna skip number two. We can't watch this whole video, that's not fair. Um, let's let's pop over to number one, pig gate. <laughs> While I still have you, if you're still here, hope you're having fun. Hope you're having a laugh. <laughs> Having a good day, I hope. If you would like to support me directly while receiving exclusive content, please consider joining me on YouTube memberships. There'll be a big join button on this page. I offer a bunch of perks um, for different tiers, but the main thing, the thing that everybody gets is a exclusive video every week that I never post to the like public audience. It is only an exclusive video. It's something that I'm very proud of. I work really hard on and it really helps keep adventures and apps going. So if that's something that interests you, Check it out, no worries if not. Um, let's watch Piggate, shall we? Our incident occurred involving a young Cameron and a pig's head. Oh! Arguably the most baffling scandal to ever hit Blighty. In 2015, David Cameron was accused of doing a particularly explicit activity with a dead pig. It was alleged by Lord Michael Ashcroft in excerpts of his unauthorized biography of Cameron published in the Mail at the time. Cameron has barely acknowledged the allegations, and beyond Ashcroft's writing, absolutely no evidence corroborating the story ever came out. Ashcroft Couple of things. If you were accused of doing something um, disgusting to a dead pig, I think as a PR move, never acknowledging it is the right move. Eventually, you hope that people will just forget. Um, of course, that's not always the case. There will always be a portion of people who think of the pig, who yell at Cameron about the pig, who leave comments online about the pig, sure. But you kind of hope that you just don't say anything. Eventually, it will go away. Now, there's no other evidence that this ever happened, which, to be fair, is not very surprising. I kind of feel like this was alleged to be like when he was quite young-ish, 
perhaps? Leave a comment down below. Do you think Piggate is real or not? Anywho. Croft talks openly about having a personal beef with the Prime Minister. As pointed out by satirist Ian Hislop, the most baffling part of Piggate wasn't the story itself, but the fact that so many people chose to believe it, since Ashcroft was clearly out to get revenge on Cameron because Cameron wouldn't let him into the cabinet. Yeah, it's an act fair. of amazing <laughs> revenge by the male in cohorts with Lord Ashcroft, which the whole country has decided to believe. Do you agree with our yeah, picks? You know Check what? Fair other... play, especially if it's coming from someone who has a grudge. All he said, he's just said it, there's no evidence, and we've all like absorbed it in the collective, you know, memory. You're gonna you're gonna remember it, right? <laughs> That's very true. I never thought of the fact that it was it was like a personal vendetta. True or not? I guess we will never know. So those have been some ridiculous scandals in British culture. Leave a comment down below. Did you have a favorite? Or maybe one that wasn't mentioned? Personally, Tractor Gate is very, very funny to me. <laughs> Again, you literally could not write that. If you'd like to watch more content right now, which honestly would be awesome, why not check out my British politics video? There's no politics in it, I promise. It's really just embarrassing, funny moments that happened in British politics, cult, British culture, British politics, that kind of stuff. I had a lot of fun making it and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, but that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye.